Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. First off, I do apologize for not being on camera that often in the last six to eight months. It's been a bit crazy trying to get my business up and running. And now that it is, which I will talk a little bit about later, but um, I can film a lot easier now. So let's get right into it. Today's video is going to be a favorites video. It's going to be mainly around accessories, my favorite type of thing. So we're going to be talking bags, makeup and beauty, plus a little bit of jewelry. So let's do this. So first off, I'd just like to talk about jewelry and the brand that I'm probably wearing all the time is a brand from the UK. It's called Masoma London and they just make some of the most perfect pieces pieces that are wearable for every day as well as a little bit more going out type pieces for an evening out but usually I would say they are pretty wearable for everyday use so I will show you some pieces that I'm wearing all of it today so we're talking rings and necklaces now I'm going to talk about necklaces their necklaces are unbelievable they come in the perfect yellow gold that makes it look just that little bit vintage and so do their rings in fact but I just feel like the necklaces really suit this vintage yellow gold color and they're stackable so you can wear them in multitudes like I'm going to show you how I've done it or you can just wear them on their own, two pieces, whatever you want. They're just perfect. So let's get right into it. I'm going to go up close and show you my neck. So this is my stack at the moment. So I'm wearing currently wearing the long chain down here which is a Roman coin necklace I think it's one of their collaborations they've done it's absolutely stunning piece there and then up the medium chain is a Hamza now the front is engraved with my initial and the back is engraved with the evil eye so no matter which way I wear it I'll still have something that I love on top of it, it's so small and subtle that you don't really see it, but it means something to me. I love the meaning behind the Hamza hand and the evil eye. They're both tattooed to me permanently, so it's nice to have it in the necklace form. And then the last one, the top smaller chain, is a kind of shark tooth necklace. It's got these little pointy bits that dangle at the front. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely stunning. It's one of my favorite pieces there. And also, just so you know, Masoma do short, medium, and long lengths, but you can still adjust them up and down depending on where you want it to sit. This is the long, this is the medium length, and this is the shorter length altogether. They do do chokers as well, but I don't have any of them, or I do actually, but I just don't wear a choker much. I feel like a choker might be a going out type thing as I said earlier but these are just some of the things I kind of lean towards every day whether it be the three, the one or the two. Um, aside from that in Masoma's range they have amazing rings. These are the ones I wear every day. Every day I kind of mix and match the stacks I do but usually it goes with this sort of set. So on my left hand if you can see this is my stack. Of course, I've got my wedding ring on my ring finger. And then I've got this medium one, which is in the signet ring, I think they're called. And it's got three little things, an evil eye, a moon, and a sun. Not sure if the lighting is good enough for that. Um, and then on the other finger, I've got sort of a Roman um, similar thing to the necklace type ring. It's got some engravings in it. Not sure what it means, but it looks absolutely stunning together. So that's the stack um, on my left hand, and I generally stick to this stack. I love a lot of rings. I think it adds a lot of depth to your outfit because I'm pretty simple in dressing, and I stick to sort of darker colors, so the having the jewelry kind of adds to it. So that's the stack there, if you can see. God, my lighting is so shocking. Um, and then on my right hand, I've got these three rings. So on the ring finger there, I've got a signet ring again with the initial L engraved on it. So if you can see that, 
um, it's there and then I've got the evil eye that's kind of an open ring uh, a little bit and then on the bottom of the stack I've just got a plain gold ring with a few little stars engraved into it so it makes that stack I don't want to give my middle finger that stack there it's absolutely stunning um, their jewelry is just unbelievable and I lean towards their stuff always particularly when they do their Black Friday sales and any sort of discounts I'm really jumping in and getting a few new pieces to add to my collection and then just rotating my other ones out um, the other company in terms of jewelry I like to mention is Astrid and Mew um, they do some amazing pieces as well. They kind of are a piercing thing as well. They do piercings in the UK at their stores, um, but obviously if you purchase online, you can just buy their jewellery. I've had a few necklaces from them that are amazing, and ear cuffs. They look really, really good, because if you don't want to commit to the piercing, you can just go for the ear cuff, and they're stunning as well. comes in a range of different colours and designs absolutely beautiful. By the way, I will link everything below so you have exactly where I got them from and the exact pieces that I'm wearing. So that's jewellery done. Uh, the only two companies I wear at the moment, so that kind of covers it easily. In terms of the next thing, I want to talk beauty products. So the first thing I want to talk about is skincare and um, I'm loving the skincare brand. They're Australian, they're called GoTo. Go to skincare, go to. They're absolutely amazing. They do a range of different skincare products, but right now I'm obsessed with this, which is the Zinc Credible product. It's the tinted version, there's a non tinted version. Now, I know they've come under a bit of criticism for having the tinted version in one color only, but it's really sheer. And to be honest, I think this acts like a moisturizer. They do call it a daily moisturizer with a sheer tint. So I'm using it at that. I'm not using it for any coverage. It just adds a beautiful glow to the skin that serves as a great base for makeup. And having the tinted one is just stunning. I don't know, I just, I think it's better than the non-tinted one. I tried the non-tinted one, but this adds more glowiness to the skin, which I love. And yes, yeah, super in love with this product at the moment. So we'll be repurchasing this before I go back to Bali where I need more of an SPF and it's only SPF 15 but I still think you know you're getting some SPF on your face prior to putting on any makeup. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention with GoTo is there's a product that's a serum face oil it's called Face Hero I'm dying to try that product it looks amazing I've heard so many YouTubers bloggers talk about that product and I'm really keen on seeing how I can use that. I love serums. I think I love them better than any face creams, moisturizers, but you know, you need to do a moisturizer properly every day. So, but this um, Face Hero product, I'm super excited to try out. So that might be on my favorites next time when I film in six to eight months. Hopefully sooner now that I'm back, so hopefully. The next group of products are all from NARS. Now, NARS have re-released, it's not really re-released, but done a limited edition um, range with their classic orgasm shade. It's their orgasm shade in the blush and they've just like put it to other things like eyeshadow palettes and highlights. So it's super exciting to see that and I did pick up a few things. The first is their NARS orgasm liquid highlighter. It looks like this. It's in this beautiful rose gold packaging and you can wear it under makeup on top of makeup as a true highlight and I tend to use it as a true highlighter um, and then I put a little bit of a more goldy tone highlight on top of that just because that matches my complexion more but the rose gold tone in this is absolutely stunning loving this at the moment I hope they keep it permanently because I hear that whole collection is limited edition so you never know the other thing I wanted to talk about was this lip balm. It's by NARS also. It's in the shade Orgasm as well. And it's called officially the Afterglow Lip Balm. And it looks like that in its beautiful rose gold packaging again. Super stunning. Um, this I kind of think is a bit like the Dior Glow lip balm thing that they have. They have a range of colors in theirs. But it's similar to that in that it's a lip balm but it gives you a little bit of color as well. But the perfect color, this pinky, 
Tony is. I've always been a fan of Nas's Orgasm Blush, and now having it in different products makes it even better. Now the last, no, the second last thing I want to talk about is this, um, is the Nars Orgasm Liquid Blush. Now, for many of you who are asking why I went for the liquid blush over the powdered one, for me personally, as I am getting older, my skin is changing and I feel like powder products aren't doing it for me personally. I feel it's drying out my skin and then as the day wears on, it's just looking patchy. Now I do live in Bali for some time of the year and there especially it gets very patchy when you add humidity and heat to it. So liquid and cream products are the way to go for me personally. And with liquid products, a little goes a long way. I only take a tiny dab of this and put it on the apples of my cheeks and blend it in and off we go. So awesome, awesome product. Um, by the way, I am wearing all these products except for this last one from NARS I'm talking about because I do have another product that I wanted to test out today and it's made my favorite. It's so good. But anyways, this is the NARS Laguna Liquid Bronzer. Now once again, like the Orgasm Blush, they've got their liquid formula for it and this is amazing. You can contour with this, you can bronze with this to give you a glowy look and as I said, with all the liquid products, a little goes a long, long way. I only use a dab of this to do my forehead and add some color to my cheeks and under my chin and off we go as well. So as far as I'm aware with the Orgasm Liquid Blush, I think there are a few other colors in the liquid blush, but in terms of the bronzer, this one, um, this is the only shade, the Laguna shade, which is very famous as the Orgasm shade is for the blush. Um, the Laguna is their most famous shade in bronzer as well, so having the two together is just amazing. And these are permanent in Nars' range as far as I am concerned. I will never want them to get rid of these, they're amazing. Since I've had them non-stop use, except for today, um, I bought something new that I really wanted to try. So those are great and they are on my face except for the bronzer. So that is all the Nars products. I'm absolutely in love with. The next two products are from Huda Beauty and Huda Beauty, well, is a brand designed and made, I guess, by a influential YouTuber, a beauty YouTuber, her name's Huda, I don't know what her last name is, but Huda, and she's released um, a few products and I think she started with lip liners and liquid lipsticks which were amazing as well and then she's gone into foundations and powders and all sorts of other things as well eyeshadow palettes etc um, but at the moment I have been in love with her Huda Beauty foundation this is the faux filter high coverage cream foundation and I'm the shade 330N butter pecan that's it there absolutely stunning now to be honest I think I like this better than the Fenty Beauty one. Oh, that's I don't know I feel like this is very full coverage and I think it's even more full coverage than the Fenty one but if you use a little bit like three quarters of a pump you can do your whole face in it and it's not as heavy as if you use more than a full pump plus so I find that if you use a little bit of it, you can get a full face done and it's not so full, full coverage because I've seen people on YouTube try it out and it looks very, very full. But I tend to use only a little bit of the product and I can still do my full face perfectly with it. So loving this. It's a winner in my book and controversially, might be better than the Fenty one. The next one is the product that I substituted my NARS Liquid Laguna Bronzer for and that is the Huda Beauty Tantor. It looks like this and I it's a contour and bronzer cream and I'm in the shade medium. It looks like that at the back. It's absolutely stunning packaging once again from Huda. Like everything she does is chic looking and this is a cream to powder product and the only way I can compare this to is sort of the Chanel, I think it's the Sol Detain, their cream bronzer. 
It's similar to this, but obviously Chanel prices are ridiculous for the makeup brand and that product is great, but I think this is better, obviously, because it's called a contour product um, for contouring, whereas I think the Chanel product would just be give you colour, give you a sun kiss glow, but this will give you full on contouring goodness. So it looks like this when I open it up. It looks really, really dark there. I am the medium shade because I'm more olive toned and then obviously when I'm in the sun in Bali I'm even more tan than I am. I'm actually a little bit more pale since I've been here in Australia for a few months in winter. But this is gorgeous, gorgeous product. It sits on the skin well and it blends really well. And if you are a super fair shade, I would suggest obviously getting the fairest shade of them all. But if you just put a little bit, you can blend it out and it just looks like a sun-kissed glow. You don't have to do the heavy contour if you don't want, for anyone really. Um, but I am loving, loving this. And I did get the brush with it as well, their contour and blending brush, and it just blends in seamlessly at the moment. So I've had one use of this and it's already made my favorite list. So those are all my beauty products, so my skincare and makeup only really three brands there but a lot of products in them. The other thing I would like to mention is I'm still loving the Fenty Beauty Concealer that's still a winner on my list and I've got another shade to use for brightening rather than matching my exact skin tone um, so that's still a winner in my books. Okay so that's all my beauty, my jewelry done, now bags. My favorite really to be honest so in terms of bag purchases I've tried to be very sparingly with it because obviously some of these brands are expensive and I want to invest in pieces that I truly love and that are classic and that will last in my collection for a long time and to be honest I've been steering heavily away from sort of designer brands so your big designers like Louis Vuitton um, Dior etc obviously one of these bags is one of those brands but like those sort of brands just because they're established names and they're very expensive, I like to look at sort of up-and-coming brands that are going to do some great things in the market and that are obviously at the mid-price points so that not everyone is discouraged from purchasing it and it's accessible to everyone. The first one I want to talk about is a brand that's been all over Instagram. I know that they've been gifting people bags and things like that, which is great. Obviously, it's a specific marketing tactic and... We talked about it with Dior and how they did it with Dior, but they've done it themselves and it's worked very well for them. But I purchased this with all my own money and I just thought I loved the style of the bag and what it could do. So it is from a brand called Senrev and this is what it looks like. Sorry, it's a bit funny. It's called from Senrev and that's what the dust bag looks like. And I got, after much deliberation, the midi maestro bag in white i think this is in the is it misoma or mis something leather it's the more sturdy leather and the more structured leather and that's what it looks like there i'll move back a bit i'm a bit forward that's what it looks like there it's absolutely stunning so this bag can be worn a number of different ways it can be worn as a sh shoulder bag or crossbody bag with the long strap there. It can be wet, worn as a handheld bag with the strap here. And then if you pull the things through, it can be worn as a backpack, which is my favorite way to wear this, actually, to be honest. I love it as a backpack. And if you pull it like that, it just pulls through, and then all the handles for the backpack are there. Now, the great thing about this bag, it's made for working women. It's got amazing compartments inside the bag itself so if I snap open everything here and open it up you will see the inside is just lined with compartments I'll get up and show you guys I'm sure a lot of you have seen the in-depth reviews if you've heard of this brand about how it holds everything in a specific space for your keys your iPad um, your wallet your laptop if you get the bigger size one so it's just perfect for people that are on the go and have different things they want to carry with you 
but don't want an empty hole of a handbag. So where you just dump everything and you're just sort of rummaging through for everything. So this is great if you're into being super organized in your handbag itself. It's made from full leather and it's got this like really grainy sort of scratch proof um, material. And that's why for me personally, I didn't feel so bad about buying white because everyone's like, well, that's a white bag, you know, it's going to get dirty. But I've had this for a few months now and it's been absolutely perfect in sort of the way the colors held up. And I've actually set it on park benches and things like that and it's been absolutely fine. It's got the four feet at the bottom. I haven't even taken the stickers off for them, so that's how much I've been using it and not noticing that the stickers are on the bottom still of the bag. But yes, if you do have um, any interest, there are plenty of videos and Instagram pics of this particular bag online. The only thing with this is I got the midi size, so I was debating whether to get the larger one, the full size one, because it fit a full 13 inch MacBook in one of the pocket sleeves. Um, and in the end, I chose not to get it because it just encouraged me to carry my laptop more than I already do. So generally, I carry my laptop with me most places, particularly when I'm going out and about to work. And I thought I would use this bag for non-working times, but have it organized so that I didn't have everything dumped in the middle. There's a smaller size, which is very cute. But for me, the smaller bag just wouldn't work in my lifestyle. So the midi size, middle size is perfect for me. So that that's the Senrev Maestro bag in the midi size, in the white. Loving, loving this at the moment. So the next bag I want to talk about is something that is controversial to many people. It's a re-release of an existing bag by Dior. And by saying that, Many people will already know what it is. It is the Dior saddlebag in the oblique pattern. And this is mine. I finally got my hands on it. I was on the wait list for six months for it last year. And I did get it last year. So I've had it for a while now and I've been able to use it. And it is amazing. I did not purchase a separate shoulder strap because first of all, they're very expensive. They're like $2,000 and I just was not willing to pay that much money for a strap. But I love the way it looks like slung over the shoulder like so. It's got a very 90s feel to it. So I am loving wearing it like that. So that's why as well I didn't choose to opt for a strap or add one on from another brand. I just think it looks better without it. Um, so mine's in the oblique pattern. Um, I thought I'd go classic vintage Dior in that respect, but I do love the smooth black leather one. If I were to get another one, which I doubt I am, it would be the black smooth leather. I just think it looks amazing with the aged gold hardware like that. There are slight differences with the vintage ones. I know the vintage market for saddlebags is huge at the moment. They've gone up in price like 50% plus. Um, and I know that the Velcro existed for the flap for the vintage ones. Now it's like a magnetic thing, so it just sits back down like that. And it's just a perfect, perfect bag. But it is a small bag. This is the biggest size you can get in the women's collection. There is a mini one, which is even tinier, and I don't think fits anything in it. I think I've heard complaints that it doesn't even fit a phone in it like a 8 plus so phones are just getting bigger so the bag doesn't even carry your phone it's a bit difficult this already is a tight fit for most of my stuff I've managed to get everything in it that I use on a daily basis so I would not say you could possibly use this for work it would just be maybe an evening or an everyday thing when you're just going up and about or shopping or meeting friends where you don't need as much whereas the Senrev here you could just use for work as well if you didn't need your laptop and things like that. A bit more space, a lot more space there. But this just looks super cute and I think it will look stunning on most people. So I am loving this bag so much and I didn't think I would and I thought I was buying into the hype of the bag but as soon as I wore it and used it, it just made my heart sing. So loving the Dior saddle in oblique. Um, and now the saddle comes in a multitude of different colors as well as the oblique. And I think it's a lot easier to get now that some time has passed since the release of it. 
I think there's different colors. There's a beautiful like tealy green and there's like obviously the nude in the full leather, the black, and I think there's the burgundy in the oblique print. And there was amazingly enough a green that I loved. I think it was only a UK or British release, but I think you can get it overseas now. But I haven't seen it. So but yeah, that's absolutely stunning and I'm hopefully one day getting a Dior book tote. And to be honest, I think I want it in the oblique pattern. I know there's many different patterns out there, but the oblique is probably the one I would go for. Would I go for the blue or the navy again? Possibly, but the burgundy is looking very, very good at the moment. As I said, I should be steering away from luxury handbags, but I keep getting pulled in a little bit by Dior and the amazing things that they're doing in their collections. The only other thing that I wanted to talk about was my brand, Bear Cactus. It's launched now at bearcactus.com and if you haven't gone to see it, I will leave the links below and also I will link their Facebook page as well which you can follow and the Instagram account which I'm constantly updating with different things but I kind of just wanted to show you a few of the products. One of them I'm wearing which is the Zanzibar leather jacket. It looks like so. It's just a classic motorcycle jacket made of lambskin leather. It's got all the silver hardware. It's absolutely stunning. It's super soft and for anyone worried about leather jackets and how thick they can be, the lambskin is super soft so you can layer things underneath and on top of it. So if it gets really cold you can actually put a coat over the top if you need that much warmth and wear like a singlet or not something underneath the leather jacket or if you want to layer a jumper underneath it and then wear the leather jacket on top absolutely fine the lambskin works perfectly and the great thing about it is that it molds to your body over time so I've had this jacket for a few months now because it's my sample and I've just been wearing it all the time and it's just stretched to the perfect fit of my body and for everyone else it will do the same for you over time. You gotta give it months and months for that to happen. Um, and you just gotta keep wearing it. You can't just wear it one week and not the other. I wear it pretty much every day if the weather is suited to it. So that's the Zanzibar basic motorcycle jacket. There is another design which is a little bit more simple than this. Um, you'll see all the photos on the website. Um, but yeah, that's just a little hint of what it is. <clears throat> The other thing I do is I have card holders and wallets. Now for everyone out there that's downsizing to fit into smaller bags like this one, um, a card holder is a great option. Um, I use it because, first of all, I don't need a big wallet with a million cards slots because I just fill them up with stuff that I don't actually use. And so having a small wallet or card holder makes it a lot easier. And so this is one of our designs. It's the JC card holder in red. It's a beautiful red and it comes in black as well, of course, <laughs> but I wanted a pop of color and the red just gives it. Um, so that's all. Oh, I'm just making sure I don't have anything showing. I mean, oh, oh well. Um, but that's, yeah, what it looks like there. It's got six slots plus um, space in the middle for cash. Um, but yes, loving, loving using these. They, they're great gifts as well and they all come with a gift box as well, so if you are purchasing as a gift, it comes in a nice little gift box. And full leather as well. Everything I put out is full leather, I don't believe in it using anything else because it just lasts longer and it wears better over time. So this is one of the wallets that I have and there's another one that's catered more towards men who are downsizing. Um, my husband is wearing that one at the moment, so I take this one, he takes the other one. But yes, all images and photos and prices are all on the website. So check it out if you are interested. That's all I wanted to say about Bear Cactus because I have been working my butt off to get that off the ground. And it has finally happened for me and I'm just so happy to share it with everyone out there in, if you're interested. Of course, if you're not, you don't have to worry about it. You can just ignore. So that is it for today. That is my favorites video plus a little bit extra at the end. I hope you guys enjoyed it and let me know if any of these are your favorites as well because I'm sure I'm not the only one that loves Nas, that loves Huda Beauty, that loves Dior and um, of course if you have any other suggestions of products I should try out, particularly the fact that 
I'm leaning towards more liquid based products and makeup um, as well as any sort of up and coming bag designers please let me know I'm willing to check them out because I love supporting up and coming designers so that's it guys I hope you have a great one Mwah. bye